Hi everyone, my name is Kehlani and I'm a science editor here at Smart Edition Academy. In this video, we're going to go over 10 science questions that cover material like you would see on your test. But before we get started, make sure you subscribe to our channel and ring the bell for notifications so you get notified when more videos like this come out. Also make sure to check out the links in the description below to some of our great free resources. There you're going to find Smart Edition's free practice test, our Facebook study guide group, which has tons of other great resources to help you study. And if you want more practice, you can check out the link to Smart Edition online course, where you actually have access to practice tests, lesson modules, video lessons, and other flashcards. Um, some really great stuff that's going to help you study. Um, but otherwise, let's go ahead and get started. Which sequence describes a hierarchy level of biological organization? A, kingdom, phylum, class, order, family, genus, and species. B, genus, class, kingdom, species, order, phylum, and family. C, family, species, genus, order, kingdom, class, and phylum. Or D, species, kingdom, genus, class, family, phylum, and order. So take a moment to think about this. But if you'll recall from our material, um, this taxonomic system is just something you kind of have to memorize. Um, so actually the answer is A. And that's because the taxonomy is the process of classifying, describing, and naming organisms. And that there are seven levels in the Linnaean taxonomic system, starting with kingdom and going all the way down to species. The so next question, which example is part of the scientific method? A, a student reads about a new way to harness energy from the sun. B, a researcher studies the effects of car exhaust on how people breathe. C, a researcher analyzes how many plants respond well to a new fertilizer or D, a student discovers how insulin plays a role in the development of diabetes. Once again, take a moment to look at your answer options, but try to think back to what the scientific method really is. You have to identify a problem, you have to conduct some research, formulate a hypothesis, and then conduct an experiment, observe that experiment over, and come to a conclusion. So which answer option best communicates that? Answer option C, a researcher analyzes how many plants respond well to a new fertilizer. And why is that? Well, that's because one of the steps that I identified is that you have to analyze information or data collected from the experiment to conclude whether the hypothesis is supported. Next question. Why did it take many years for the cell theory to be developed? A, advancements in microscopy took place slowly. B, cells were difficult to isolate after experimental analysis. C, researchers believed a cell formed from pre-existing cells. Or D, scientists already proved that cells were essential for life. So take a moment to look at your options again, but let's recall what the cell theory is. There's three parts to it, right? All living things are composed of one or more cells. Cells are alive and represent the basic unit of life. And all cells are produced from pre-existing cells, also option C. So likely our answer isn't going to be one of the, of the components of that cell theory. So remembering that Robert Hooke actually discovered the first cells in the mid 18th century, our answer option for this one is going to be A. The cell theory is a theory because it is supported by a significant number of experimental findings, but it took many years to be developed because microscopes were actually not powerful enough to make such observations. Next question. Which statement best represents Mendel's experiments with garden peas? A, as a result, Mendel developed several theories that have since been disproved. B, Mendel realized he was on an incorrect track, which led him to other experimental media. C, as a result, Mendel developed foundational conclusions that are still valid and followed today. D, Mendel collaborated with others interested in genetics to develop hereditary guidelines we still use today. So looking at our options and remembering our material, Mendel is actually the father of genetics, and he actually had a theory of heredity. So where does that leave us? With option D. All right, question four. What organelle is only associated with plant cells? A, cell wall, B, ribosome, C, cytoplasm, D, Golgi apparatus. So looking at our answer options, it's pretty clear if you memorized your cell organelles um, that our best answer option is actually going to be A, cell wall. And that's because only plant cells have cell walls which help protect the cell and provide structural support. What phase of the cell cycle must happen before cell division? A, interphase, B, metaphase, C, prophase, or D, telophase? So let's recall that the cell cycle is actually a circular process which regulates cell division and that it can be divided into two major phases. 
interphase and the mitotic or M phase, which actually includes options B, C, and D, metaphase, prophase, and telophase. So what does that leave us? With answer option A. And that's because before mitosis or meiosis can occur, interphase must happen. Next question. What is the correct order of the stages of the cell cycle? A, G1, S, G2, M, B, G2, S, G1, M, C, M, S, G2, G1, or D, S, M, G1, G2. So let's do some basic elimination processes here. So we obviously can kind of infer one comes before two. So let's just eliminate option B and C at the moment because G2 coming before G1 just doesn't seem like a likely option. So we're left with G1, S, G2, or M, or S, M, G1, G2. Now, this is just one of those things you have to kind of memorize the cell cycle. So if you recall our chart, you're going to remember that um, the G1 is actually the growth phase, um, and that's the first gap um, phase, which prepares the cell to copy its DNA. And it actually goes into the S phase, which includes DNA replication, before it goes into the G2 phase, which is the preparation for division. Um, before hitting the M or mitotic phase that we previously talked about, which includes all of those stages from prophase all the way to cytokinesis. So our answer option is A. And that's because during interphase, the cell undergoes an initial gap phase called G1 before its DNA is copied in the S phase. And after that, it's copied and goes into the second gap phase, like we already said. And then the cell is ready to enter uh, into the mitotic phase, which divides into daughter cells. All right, next question. When would a cell most likely contain the most nucleotides? A, S phase, B, G1 phase, C, M phase, or D, G2 phase? So let's recall that cell cycle process again. So we just identified that the G1 is that growth phase, the S uh, is the DNA replication phase, or G2 is the preparation for division, and that M phase is actually the division for daughter cells. So when would it most likely contain the most nucleotides? Answer B. A cell copies its DNA during the S phase, and the nucleotides are the building blocks of the DNA. So the step preceding the S phase, which we know was the G1 phase, is actually the phase of the cell cycle when it would contain the most nucleotides. Next question. The sequence of amino acids in a gene determines A, the primary structure of a codon, B, the primary structure of a protein, C, the primary structure of a nucleotide, or D, the primary structure of a nucleic acid. So let's recall how DNA structures work. So the DNA is that double helix structure that wraps around and is actually formed from nucleotides. So definitely not see the primary structure of a nucleotide, right? So let's eliminate that one. So then what does DNA code for? Protein. 